G'day and welcome to Videodrome Cinema. Here are 10 interesting and fun facts about Spider-Man Homecoming. It's probably pretty well known that Spider-Man has joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but how did we get here? In 2014, there was that big Sony email hack and a bunch of personal emails got onto the net. From that, we kind of got the picture that Sony had been trying to get on board with Marvel for a while now to get Spider-Man back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All the while making sure that Sony still remains as the rights holder for the distribution. But in these letters we could also read that these negotiations were kind of stagnating. In 2015, in February, they actually did reach a decision. The decision was that Sony would retain the character rights of Spider-Man, but he'd go back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This meant that Spider-Man could join the Marvel characters in the Disney films, but also that some of the Marvel characters would come over into the standalone Spider-Man films. Also, Kevin Feige is the executive producer of the Spider-Man films, but he's from the Marvel films, so he's not getting money for this. All rights remain with Sony, except for the merchandising, which ends up now with Disney. With Homecoming only just coming out, everybody's already talking about the sequel. We know so far that Sony and Disney are going to be working together on the second part. Tom Holland said in an interview that in 2016, they were already actually in talks about what kind of villain was going to show up in the second part. In December 2016, we got the first Homecoming trailer, which was a huge success. And because of that success, Sony announced that there will be a sequel in 2019. Kevin Feige says that he kind of imagines the new Spider-Man films being kind of like the Harry Potter universe, meaning that each film would be one school year in Peter Parker's life. It's not official yet, but during the premiere we got some little tidbits. It's rumored that John Watts is going to be taking the helm for the sequel and that they're going to be filming in either April or May in 2018. Sony has wanted to build a Spider-Man universe for a while now. They wanted something like the MCU and ideas were being kicked around even back during Andrew Garfield's run for The Amazing Spider-Man. They wanted a Black Cat standalone and a Sinister Six standalone and at the time they were still thinking that Andrew Garfield would have cameos or roles in these films and he'd have two separate Spider-Man films as well. Right now, because Sony isn't really talking about that anymore, or they're giving conflicting information, we don't actually know what's happening with that. What we do know is that there will be a Venom standalone, but they really do want a Black Cat film. But the thing we don't know is how that's going to fit into the MCU. When it was announced that Sony wanted to reboot the Spider-Man series, there was a rumor going about that the kid in the Spider-Man mask would be an African American, like in the comics when he's Miles Morales. There was huge controversy surrounding this and major backlash on the internet and the fans were flat out angry that Spider-Man can only be white. And actually one of the writers of Spider-Man said that that really scares him. During pre-production, it was rumored that Drew Goddard, the director of The Cabin in the Woods, would be taking over the helm. The rumor wasn't totally unfounded because Sony did actually get him on board to direct the Sinister Six standalone and to write the script for that because production of that film took such a long time and never actually got off the ground. He ended up leaving and joining the Netflix team for the Daredevil series. The series is really successful and a Apparently Sony did actually go back to him to get him to direct the new Spider-Man film, but he said no. And then after when Sony was sure that they wanted to reboot Spider-Man, they were thinking maybe they'd get Sam Raimi to come back and direct. But what we don't know is if Sam Raimi would have continued his previous films or reboot a totally new franchise. A couple of other directors were considered to take the helm for Homecoming, amongst them John Francis Daly, Jonathan Goldstein. This is interesting because the two of them ended up writing the script for the film. Before John Watts getting the role, Theodore Melfi had the biggest chance of taking the lead on direction, but he ended up saying no so he could direct Hidden Figures. Right. 
and then actors. Anytime they're rebooting a franchise, especially something like Spider-Man, there's hundreds of kids considered for the role. There were some wild rumors that maybe Dylan O'Brien would take the role. And of course we know him from Maze Runner, but he ended up denying the rumors. And then maybe that Daniel Radcliffe would play him from the Harry Potter movies. Either way, it's kind of the Sony thing to do to, in the last minute, tell us five actors that they're, these are the ones that we're considering. These are our top choices. According to rumors, Marvel actually liked Ace of Butterfield the best, but Sony was the one who ended up going with Tom Holland. J.K. Simmons said that he'd like to come back as Jonah Jameson, but because he'd already signed with the Justice League, this couldn't be possible. Brian Cranston also said in an interview that he'd love to be a Spider-Man villain, for example, the Green Goblin. This was just a rumor because Sony never actually asked him to play a role. Vincent D'Onofrio also said that he'd like to play the Kingpin character in the Spider-Man films and not just in the Daredevil TV show. And even Matthew McConaughey said one time in an interview that he'd love to play a Spider-Man villain. Also, in another interview, Alfred Molina said that he'd like to return as Dr. Octavius. The score for the film was written by Michael Giacchino, who also did the music for Doctor Strange. He composed an orchestral version for the 1967 original Spider-Man theme. This is going to be the third time that we're going to hear this Spider-Man theme in a Spider-Man movie. This is going to be the first Spider-Man film where Vulture is going to be the main villain. When there are still in talks that maybe Sam Raimi would be doing a fourth part for his films, back then they also wanted Spider-Man to maybe fight against the Vulture. And actually, in, during the DVD commentary, they actually talked about how they wanted Rafe Fiennes to play the role, or maybe Ben Kingsley. The Vulture is the fourth member of the original Sinister Six team to appear in a Spider-Man movie. There was Doctor Octopus, Sandman, Electro, and now Vulture. But unfortunately, we still have to wait for Mysterio and Kraven to make their appearance. So these are the interesting and fun facts I found for you about Spider-Man Homecoming. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Of course, come back and visit us soon and subscribe to our channel to see our latest videos. Thanks. Bye.